Next up on the install list is this Chevy pickup. Now all we're doing in this guy is installing a new navigation system. He's getting a Pioneer 7200 and we'll look at the parts here in a minute, but let's take a look at this radio real quick, shall we? So we've done one of these before on the channel, I'm pretty sure, but it's always fun to talk about like what's going on. So he's got this little tiny screen here. He's got a cigarette lighter here. It's got this big pocket. They have these cool dual glove boxes now. And then in the armrest for this one, he's got the factory SD card, dual USB and aux jack right here. Right now, unfortunately, the problem is that there's no way to retain these factory units here. Now, Metra does make a adapter that is the same exact size, which allows you to take this one out, but it's really only made for the ones that are up in the dash because it's only like a three foot cable. These modern phones with CarPlay and Android Auto don't like anything past cost maybe 10 feet max. They just aren't designed to read that. So you figure you have 10 feet, then you have the cable. This snakes its way all through the seats. Plus this is all a bus system, meaning like the dual USB, the SD cards are all on a bus that the aftermarket radio can't read. It doesn't see it. Like behind this radio, there's not dual USB and an SD card. Aftermarket radios aren't able to decipher that information yet. One day we might get lucky and they might be able to. As we said, he's going with the 7200 in this one, but he's not gonna do Android Auto or Apple CarPlay. Like he's really actually, which is, I know, buying it for the onboard navigation. He wants to use onboard navigation. He has no desire to use his phone for anything other than Bluetooth music. For this one, we're just putting the USBs in the glove box. After talking with him, he's like, I only need them for updates. I'm never planning on using those features. So cool. Well, I said, all right, well, we'll dump them in the glove box for you. Well, I'll be good there. So that's kind of nice. Now what we want to do is hop over to the bench. And we'll show you the parts we're going to use for this while Fernando goes ahead and starts getting this disassembled. There's a lot of cutting involved in this too. A lot of cutting. Ugh. So when taking this radio out, the first thing you have to do is remove this exterior beauty panel. It's just a bunch of clips, and I mean a bunch, just like in typical GM fashion. They have way too many clips for what they're trying to do. Now, as you can see, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten clips holding on this plastic. And they put them right here where the fragile parts are, right here in the bottom. Nice fragile part, two big metal clips. Awesome. So be real careful when you take this out. Next, what we want to do is go ahead and pull these four screws holding this whole big pan right off of here. Now we'll go ahead and on the back of the unit, there's just two plugs. One is a USB style connector and one is a regular connector. And then there's one more for the air conditioner. So once you've gone ahead, this is all one piece. So the only thing we're gonna use out of this is this bottom air conditioner piece. This is gonna snap out. The rest of this is just gonna go back in the bag he can take home. This is the radio right here, this top piece. And as we were talking about, this USB right here plugs into the screen. This is what controls the screen. They're actually using a USB bus network to do that. So that's gonna be this gray plug right here. Now this brown plug right here, this is the USB that goes into the armrest that controls that hub. That's why our aftermarket radio doesn't know what to do with it because they can't control hubs at the moment. We have a gray plug, we have the antenna adapter. Sirius XM is capable. The difference between a Sirius XM cable and a regular antenna is the antenna is always gonna be fat like this. The Sirius XM or navigation are gonna be thin. And we have these two main harnesses here. We have the gray and we have the green. And then there's just a clip here on the top that holds this in. Go ahead and lift up on it. Try not to cut your fingers. And as you notice this funky shape of the dash, it's kind of L-shaped. This is just gonna slide right out. And this is the radio right here. This is it. Plastic, I know, it's pretty sad. So there's a bunch of stuff we have to remove on this. So what we're going to do is we're gonna draw on here what needs to come off. So we have to cut the front of the radio just like this. And then we have to go inside here and there's a bunch of stuff we have to cut here. We have to cut along here and here up from here and then in this side. So we wanna remove up through here, cross, cross the top, cross there, down this side here and across to this. 
So basically this whole can right here is going to come out. You don't want to try to get it all in one piece. The best bet is to cut it across the section, try to take out the top piece, then try to take out the bottom piece. The other thing too is sometimes there is a module for OnStar right here. Don't worry about it. Go ahead and slide it out. It will sit right here on this piece right here. So you just slide it out, put it down here on the bottom, a little double-sided tape or Velcro will hold it right in place. When you do that, you want to also go ahead and remove this. That's the cutting you have to do. It's a lot of work. To do that, we like to use this tool. It's one of those cool little trimmers, flush trim thing. They're awesome, by the way. You should get yourself one. It's a right? multi-tool. It's a multi-tool. Who doesn't love multi-tools? Anyways, all good there. Fernando's gonna go ahead and get start cutting all that fun stuff. And <laughs> sorry, buddy. We're gonna head back over to the bench. So the kit we're gonna use is the BK GMK 325BM. For this, it's just a basic radio swap, so all we're gonna do is use the pack LCGM 51. We're gonna need an antenna adapter, which Paul gave us the wrong one, so no big deal there. trying to get like clips like this out it's best if you have a hand underneath and if you're applying constant pressure to make it go this way it snaps out way easier sorry about the noise Fernando is cutting the dash Now when you're building a dash kit, a lot of the times the screw holes are universal, meaning they're designed to fit every radio cage that has ever been made, it seems like. Well, that's great. And for the most part, cages haven't changed much since they've first come out. But for some reason, they don't always line up perfect. I don't know if it's in the engineering, like they just don't get it right 100% of the time. If they're not 100%, make them 100%. Go ahead and, you know, make the holes bigger. That way you have a nice centered radio and it's nice and mounted into the kit and your gapping is good and straight. And it just, it's a better, you know, it's a finished product. Don't be afraid to actually have to drill the holes out if you need to. All right, this radio looks good in the dash. We'll go ahead and snap our air conditioning controls in. And this guy is all set. Now I will say this is painted to match, so this is a really nice finish for sure. Looks good. This is the second generation of this. They, uh, the first go around, what would happen is this paint would start to flake off, so Best Kits went back and redesigned the kit, had it repainted, and this one is holding up way nicer than the previous version. The hole is made. As you can see now, there's plenty of room for the radio. That big bar is out of the way. Lots of room in there. Now this unit has a GPS antenna, so that is gonna go back there somewhere. A side note real quick about GPS antennas. There's two things that have happened lately in the GPS world. One is that if you have a factory GPS antenna, iDatalink is making adapters for those so that you can retain them and just plug them right into the unit on some of the vehicles. Two, they've always been able to mount underneath the dash. They don't actually have to sit on the dash. They'll, they'll see through plastic. Put them at the base of the window underneath the dash. You don't, you don't have to see them. If, I always laugh when I see them. I, it, you don't need them. All right, so we have all our stuff laid out here. We have all the tape cut off because we don't like it. Let's take a look at this harness real quick. Now, obviously, this guy is going to plug into this like this, and that'll be the brain. This is what's going to give us our wrap, which is retained accessory power. This means that the radio will stay on until you open the door, just like it does now. If there's a chime in the car, this is what's going to chime now, not the driver's door speaker. Other than that, everything else is going to work pretty much the same. It has this. This is the aux 
from the armrest. We're hoping, it, you know, it could be, might not be. We can check it. We'll go into the car and check it before we plug it in to see if we're wasting our time. But it says aux audio, so there's a good chance this is the factory aux. That'd be awesome. It just has four speaker wires on it. It has the accessory, the ground, a remote turn on, and a constant 12 volts. Now the remote turn on could also be an amplified antenna. We don't know yet. Like I said, we'll take this into the car for a couple minutes once we're done explaining this. What we want to check is right here. Boom, red, accessory, 12 volts, 10 amp. What that means for you and I is that if he ever decides to add a backup camera, we don't have to add a relay. You always want to check this anytime you're doing one of these smart harnesses to see what this amperage output is. Pack is nice enough to put it on here because they don't want you to blow this guy up. 10 amps is good for one camera, not two. If you're going to do two cameras, add the relay. Why would you do two cameras? You might even do four cameras, whatever turns you on. Other than that, basically just talks about if you need the blue white wire, the auxiliary is on here. But yeah, so these are pretty straightforward. There's no programming or anything like that. And there's nothing on the back side. Let's run over into the car real quick and we'll plug these in and see if these wires are there. So the remote turn on is not part of this. There's nothing in the gray harness. And what we're doing is we're looking on this side and we're comparing it to that side. There's nothing pinned over here. Now checking the aux cables. The aux cables, there are wires on the other side. So we'll go ahead and plug those into the auxiliary input or the AV input on the 7200. A lot of radios now, you know, the aux is a little different it's just an eighth inch the 7200 actually still has a set of RCA inputs they're under the AV tab instead of the aux tab so we'll switch it in the menu some of the radios now don't even have auxiliary inputs anymore because why let's head back over to the bench so we know we're good now, as far as matching up wires for wire on this, we can do that. They're all the same. The only difference is this has a pink wire here and a purple white. The pink is for vehicle speed sense. You don't need to hook it up if you don't want to. The Pioneers will work on what's called hybrid mode, which is just like your portable Garmin's or Magellan's or whatever you have up on your dash or your TomTom. -tom. Those work off of a hybrid mode, meaning they use the GPS to actually tell you where you're at, just like your phone does. So they work really well. The only time you might have an issue is if you go through a lot of tunnels. And then you have the purple white, which is the reverse trigger. We're not doing a backup camera in this, but what we're going to do just in case he ever decides to add one is we're gonna lengthen this so there'll, there'll be a pigtail out for that. We're gonna put a pigtail out for the accessory and the ground and also the remote turn on we'll put a pigtail out for that. So we'll have four pigtails sticking off this harness. So there should be no reason once we're done, we actually ever have to go back in it again. All right, ready? And there we go. So like I said, we have the reverse, remote turn on, power and ground for a camera. It's all taped up. Our auxiliary is right here. We're plugged in. Also, I went and grabbed the antenna adapter, the BAA22. This is what's gonna plug into the radio. We're all good there. So our harness is all set. We're just gonna go ahead and we'll zip tie this guy into this right here, just so it's not flopping around in the dash and whatnot. So we have the kit, we have the wiring harness. Fernando's just finishing up all the pieces in the dash. Let's go ahead and let's get into the car and start plugging these things in and do a little testing. All right, so we plug in the AV input, power plug, GPS antenna, then we have the Bluetooth mic, antenna adapter, USB one and two, and we also have, there it is, AC panel. I'm gonna go ahead and get that plugged in. Make sure to plug in the air conditioner. All right, so we have at least one screw in as usual. Now what we want to do is go ahead and test everything and make sure it works. Now when you're in the navigation... Have a nice trip. Thank Drive you. carefully. Th thank you, Susan. You have to set it up. Always want to set it up before you deliver it. You have what's called TTS and you have non-TTS. What TTS is, it's going to say the street name. So try to select one with the street names because most people want that. Go ahead and select next. Uh, tell it what kind of temperature you have. If you want, you can fill in the currency. Select next. Select next like finish and then one other feature that we found most of our customers ask us to turn off is in the settings where you go to warnings you go to speed warning warn when speeding uh, it's set up now for visual it used to be set up for audio and visual they just want us to disable that so we'll go ahead and just get that out of the way what's the weather like today it's currently clear and 80 all right our microphone works so we're good there. Now we'll go ahead and get the rest of the screws in the dash. All right, so this guy, as you can hear now, is done. We're gonna get this out of here. A couple things to note, GPS systems typically will set the time by themselves. You may have to go in and tell it whether it's daylight savings times or not, or go in and tell it what coast you live on. So like we were here in Eastern Standard Time, 
So sometimes like in the Kenwoods, it's, it's helpful if you do that, it just speeds up the process. You don't have to, but we do it anyways. Fernando's gonna get this pulled out and on to the next one.